Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Zor Education. Continuing um, discussion on different aspects of motion, uh, today's uh, lecture is about acceleration. Um, this is uh, part of the course uh, called Physics for Teens, presented on Unizor.com, uh, and that's exactly the website where I suggest you to, um, to watch this lecture, because it also contains notes for every lecture, and uh, uh, exams. It also contains the course of math for teens, which is actually a prerequisite for this course. Um, and uh, also there is even US law for teens. Uh, now the site is completely free and there are no advertisements, so I do suggest you to, uh, to use it uh, extensively in your studying. So, let's talk about acceleration. Well, the previous lecture about speed and velocity was really fundamental um, to understand uh, all the aspects of motion in uh, classical mechanics. Now, this one, acceleration, is just basically a continuation. If you have understood uh, perfectly well um, what is a velocity, uh, that this is a, a, a derivative from um, coordinate functions, it's a vector, uh, from each coordinate function. Uh, what's the difference between velocity and speed? Velocity is a vector, speed is its uh, uh, magnitude of this vector. So if you understand that, uh, then this particular lecture is very, very simple. So again, velocity is basically an instantaneous speed of change of position, right? So uh, if you have uh, coordinate functions uh, x, y, and z, which describe the vector from the origin of coordinates to a position uh, of our point at time t, then the corresponding velocity vector is an instantaneous change of each parameter and the instantaneous change as I have explained is just a derivative from the corresponding function coordinate function so instant change of the position is velocity now let's just consider a completely generalized um, function of time some kind of characteristic um, of, uh, of the object which is related uh, to time whatever the function is, h of t. t is the time parameter, h is its characteristic, which means anything, basically, which can mean anything. It can mean the position, it can mean speed, it can mean, uh, I don't know, density, uh, whatever. Now, if this is the function of time, then instantaneous change of this particular characteristic is exactly the same as in case of position and velocity, right? So instantaneous change of time-related characteristic of an object is derivative from this function by the time, by, by the parameter argument t, right? So that's a general position. That's exactly what was used here. Now, let's just apply this rule to this vector. Now, this vector is the vector of the position, right? Let's call it p. And instantaneous change of the vector of the position is velocity. Now, what if I want to find out how velocity is changing? Velocity can change. We are not really uh, driving the car with, permanent, with constant speed, right? Uh, so, how can we do this? Exactly the same way. Instantaneous change of this particular vector of velocity is derivative of each function which corresponds each coordinate of this vector, right? Now, so we need to do the derivative from the derivative. And as we know, this is just derivative of the second order. So we are applying exactly the same logic to find out what is the instantaneous change of velocity. And this is called the vector of acceleration. End of story. 
So basically we have applied exactly the same logic to find out the instantaneous um, uh, rate of change of certain parameter we do the derivative. Now if we want to know instantaneous rate of change of this parameter we do a derivative. So if we have our position described as three coordinate functions the first derivative describes the vector of velocity and the second derivative uh, from these original functions describes the vector which we call acceleration. It's definition, so there is nothing to talk about, it's definition. All right? So, all right, now we have to talk about terminology just a little bit. Um, now, in case of the first derivative, this is the vector, velocity is a vector. But we also have a, uh, the word speed, right? Which, strictly speaking, we have decided that, okay, velocity is a vector, and speed is its magnitude. Now, what's the magnitude of the vector v? Well, the magnitude of the vector is, as we know, square root of squares of coordinates. So this is basically speed. Now, what's interesting is, if you consider a movement, uh, let's say, along the uh, uh, z-axis, which means that x and y are always zero, then this and this is zero, this is the first derivative, and now this and this will be zero, right? And this square root of this thing would be basically the z of t itself, right? So in this case, the vector will be um, z prime of t, 0, 0, comes zero uh, z, z prime of t and the uh, the magnitude of this vector would also be well if we want to be precise it's absolute value because this is a square root and it's a positive uh, now this particular value may, may be negative but well it's almost uh, the same as uh, z prime t right so almost the same as first derivative but in any case we have two different words one is for the vector of velocity, which is a vector, actually, and the speed um, is uh, the magnitude of this vector, which by absolute value is equal to basically the Mooney component if we are moving along a straight line um, along some kind of a either z-axis or x-axis or anything else. Vector itself and its magnitude when we are talking about direction along uh, the straight line are almost the same because we're not really talking about direction very much because direction is obviously along the same straight line does not change and if it doesn't change we can probably ignore it but in any case strictly speaking in a three-dimensional world this is a vector called ve uh, velocity and this is uh, a scalar uh, the magnitude of this vector and we call it speed. So we have two different words. Velocity for vector, speed for uh, its magnitude. Now, in case of acceleration, there are no two words. There is a vector of acceleration, and you can talk about absolute value of acceleration, which is basically, again, square root of this square plus this square plus this square. So the word acceleration, in some cases, assumes that we're talking about the vector, and in some cases it assumes that we're talking about the magnitude of this vector. So it's only the context probably should clarify this issue. But again, if we are talking about the straight line movement, which in many um, beginners' courses of physics is the only kind of a movement which they consider, well, except maybe rotation, so in any case, in most cases addressed in regular course uh, of uh, physics for beginners, we are talking about the straight line, in which case, obviously, all the vectors have exactly the same direction, and we can probably not think about the direction anymore, and think only about the magnitude of this vector. With a sign, plus or minus, which basically kind of signifies the direction. All right, so that's just side issue about the terminology. So we have acceleration, and these are second derivative of the coordinate functions. Now, what I wanted to do right now is just to give you a couple of examples of movement, its uh, 
velocity and speed and its acceleration and its magnitude of the acceleration. All right, so examples. I have four examples. The first two are absolutely trivial. Now, let's consider you have the movement which is defined by the following coordinate functions. Now, what does it mean? It means that at any moment of time, our object, our point actually where the object is located, is always in the beginning of the coordinates, in the origin. And it doesn't move. So basically, it's a, a, a body at rest. It's the object which doesn't move. Its initial position is at the origin of coordinates, 0, 0, 0. And it doesn't move since at all. Well, that's the easiest, actually, kind of movement. No movement at all, right? Now, what's the first derivatives? Well, it's a constant, so the first derivative is 0. Obviously, the magnitude of this vector. So, the, the velocity is a null vector. I hope you remember what null vector is. Vector with coordinates equal to 0 all uh, components. Now its magnitude is obviously zero as well. Now if we want to go to acceleration, and it's obviously zero as well, so it doesn't move, it doesn't accelerate, so everything is equal to zero. And this is the simplest kind of case which we will probably <laughs> never be, we will be dealing with this kind of movement. It's really trivial. Now, the second, also absolutely trivial, is when the body is also at rest, but not at the beginning, not at the origin of coordinate, but somewhere else. Let's say the initial position, which does not change with time, is 3, 10, and minus 6. So we are at point in the three-dimensional world with three coordinates, 3, 10, and 6, and minus 6, and the point doesn't really, I mean, the object doesn't really move from this point at all. What happens with the first derivative, with velocity? Well, again, the constant, the, the, the derivative from the constant is 0, so we also have exactly the same thing. And obviously, if the body is not moving, its velocity vector of velocity, its speed, obviously it's all zero. And if it's not moving, if it's standing still, obviously there are no acceleration. The second derivative is also equal to zero. And obviously the magnitude, the speed, is equal to zero, and acceleration as a constant, as a, as a scalar, is also zero. Again, very trivial case. Now we will slightly change this thing. My third example is three plus six t. Y is equal to ten minus eight t, and z is equal to minus six plus ten t. Now, what does it mean? Well, at t equals to zero, we are in exactly the same position as in the previous example, 3, 10, and minus 6. But now, as t increases, as the time goes by, my uh, object is moving. Now, this is, these are all linear um, equations of time. So it's very easy to prove that the resulting movement will be along straight line. Some straight line, doesn't really matter which one, but some straight line. Now, what's interesting is how fast I will move. So what's my velocity? Well, the vector of velocity is the vector of derivatives, right? Now, the derivative of 3 plus 6t, well, that's the sum of two functions. So derivative of the sum is equal to sum of derivatives. 
derivative of 3 is a constant, which means it's 0. Derivative of 6, t is 6. Derivative of 10 minus 8, 8t eight is minus 8. And derivative of uh, minus 6 plus 10t is 10. Okay, so that's my velocity. Now, now look at this. Velocity is a vector. Now, what's interesting is this vector doesn't change with time. What does it mean? It means that our linear speed along that line is, exo is, is exactly the same and it does not change. So, the vector of velocity which, which has a magnitude and direction, since it does not change, there is no dependency on the time parameter, right? It doesn't change. It means that the direction and the magnitude of this vector are always the same. So, direction obviously is uh, defined by three coordinates. Uh, now, its magnitude, uh, it's very easy to calculate. So, the magnitude is equal to square root of 6 square plus minus 8 square plus 10 square which is 3664 100 plus 100 200 so it's 10 square root of 2. So that's the magnitude and that's the speed. So this uh, velocity vector defines direction obviously along that straight line defined by these Parameter are parameterized equations where t time is a parameter and uh, the magnitude is this one so the direction is within this straight line and the linear speed along this um, along this straight line is this now finally acceleration now acceleration these are constants so derivative from the constant is zero so there are no there is no acceleration, which means that the speed is constant. It doesn't uh, uh, do it faster, it doesn't do it slower, but for, with a certain constant speed along the line defined by these equations, our body is moving and moving and moving without any change of the rate of, um, uh, without any change in the rate of movement, okay? So that's my third example. And the fourth example, uh, let me just light it out. I want to draw a picture. Okay, so this is the Tower of Pisa. So I'm sure everybody knows that there is a town in Italy called Pisa and there is a tower in there which is basically slanted a little bit and um, Galileo uh, was using it as an experiment he was dropping balls down to the earth and he was actually um, counting uh, whatever the time uh, covered may maybe the speed of the ball it's not really easy to do the speed but anyway he was doing the experiments with uh, uh, with things which he dropped from the Pisa, uh, from the uh, from the Tower of Pisa, and he found out that whatever um, uh, object he he drops, the 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 time until it reaches the ground is exactly the same, and he was kind of surprised a little bit because he was thinking that heavier objects should really fall faster, but that's not the case. In any way, so this is the Tower of Pisa, and let's consider that the height vertical is capital H. So, we are dropping certain object from the top of the Tower of Pisa down to the ground. Now, uh, first of all, I have to talk about coordinate system. Now, here is coordinate system. This is the origin. These are on the ground um, X and Y. And this is z axis, okay? All the way up to the top of the Tower of Pisa. Which means that our original position
So only the z uh, component is not equal to zero. Uh, the x and y component of the object which we uh, are going to drop from the top of the tower. Um, so the z component is h, x and y are, z are zero. That's pretty much understood. Now, now I would like to um, to tell you how exactly this particular object will be falling down. Well, it will fall down along this vertical line, which means x and y coordinates will not change. It will be still zero. So this is zero and this is zero for any t. Doesn't change. But z coordinate is changing with the time. Now, initially at t equal to zero it's h and then it goes becomes smaller and smaller that's why there is a minus sign and what's interesting is it's proportional to square root of the time interval passed from the beginning where g is some kind of a constant we're not talking about what's the meaning of this constant and i put the coefficient 2 just for convenience because this is a constant anyway i can put k but I decided to put g over 2 to make my further calculations just slightly easier. So there is some kind of a constant, and this is given. I'm, I mean, I'm giving it to you by definition that this is the law of falling from the uh, height h, because if t is equal to 0, obviously z of 0 is equal to h as it should. Now, at some time, Let's just think about what time um, it, it will reach the ground. Well, it will reach the ground when z of t will be equal to zero, right? So the moment capital T, when it reaches the ground, it means that zero is equal to h minus g t square over two, from which t is equal to 2h divided by g square root, right? So this is the time. If my body is falling according to this formula, then this is the time when it will reach the ground. But that's not exactly my point right now. This is a side issue. My point is, let's find velocity, velocity at each moment of time and acceleration. OK. So we will disregard this, we don't really need it. Okay, velocity is the first derivative from the coordinate functions, right? So what is this vector? Well, the x coordinate is constant zero, so the first component of velocity, the derivative from the x would be zero. Y would be exactly the same thing. Now the derivative of this, well this is a constant, minus remains. Now, t squared is, derivative is 2t, right? This is just a coefficient. So it will be g times 2t divided by 2. So it would be minus gt. Well, that's why I put divided by 2 to get a little bit nicer velocity. Okay? Otherwise, I would have to put coefficient 2 here. So this is my velocity as a vector. So let's just analyze it. First of all, you see 0 and 0, which means my body would not move outside of the vertical line. It's only within the z-axis it will move. No movement um, outside of the z towards x or uh, increasing or decreasing x or y. It will be 0 all the time. Now, along the z, it's minus. What does it mean that it's minus? Well, that's because we are decreasing, right? We were on the h and we are going down to zero. So we are decreasing. Since we are decreasing, function is decreasing, and decreasing functions have negative derivative, right? So that's why it's minus gt. So what's interesting is that my velocity is not constant now. I mean, it's constant by direction, but it's not constant by magnitude, because the magnitude of this thing is square root of zero square plus 0 square plus minus gt square, which is gt. So magnitude 
is increasing as T is increasing. So as the time goes by, my body moves faster and faster and faster. And we all know that in the beginning, basically, the velocity is equal to zero, right? We just dropped it. We didn't push it down. We just dropped it. And if we dropped it, the initial speed is equal to zero. So if t is equal to zero, my initial velocity is equal to zero. Now, if, my, uh, if the time goes by, and as you see, the mag magnitude of the velocity is increasing, so the velocity uh, will be the maximum at the very end, right? So if you remember the very end, t would, was what? square root of 2h over g, right? I was just deriving this. So at moment t, my velocity will be g times t, which is equal to square root of 2hg, right? g in the top and square root of g in the bottom, so it will be square root of g in the numerator. So that would be my final velocity when it reaches the, uh, the ground. But anyway, this is my vector of velocity. This is its magnitude. And what's my vector of acceleration? That's the derivative of this. 0, 0. Derivative of minus gt is minus g. So my acceleration is constant. So my speed is not constant. My velocity vector is not constant. But the acceleration is constant. So whenever the body goes down, it accelerates, which means um, the instantaneous increase of the speed is constant. Increase of the speed is not constant. That's the velocity. But instantaneous increase of instantaneous increase of the position is constant. That's what's very important. And it's obviously related to gravity. Our planet attracts everything, and uh, the uh, result of this attraction is basically the force which brings down this particular body. And what's interesting about the whole story here is that the uh, acceleration is constant. Well, that's basically, that concludes uh, my few examples of knowing the coordinate function, whatever the coordinate function is, we can basically find out everything. Now, in this particular case, we found out the velocity, we found out the acceleration, we found out the moment of time when the movement actually is ending, when it reaches the ground, and we even found the final speed at that particular moment, when this particular object hits the ground, that's the speed of hitting the ground. Everything is derived from uh, equations of, of motion. Here. This, this, and this. As long as you know how the object moves, you can calculate all these little things which, which, are, uh, which are needed to basically analyze the movement. All right. That's basically it for today. Thank you very much, and good luck.